right. Good morning. Good morning. Come on in. Come on in. Wow, look at all those faces populate the screen. This is awesome. Thank you all for attending. Thank you for being here at the Invest in the Midwest, our virtual rally for AEFL week, our second annual Invest in the Midwest. And um, loving seeing all these uh, familiar faces. And once again, thank you for joining us as we start our presentation here and hopefully I can um, get many of you involved in uh, in some of our activities as we go along through the day as the states present as well as uh, maybe um, we'll hear some some chanting some uh, uh, adult ed works um, and you don't leave me alone with the adult ed works because my voice it does carry but uh, I can get a little monotone a after a while uh, <laughs> so uh, hopefully you're all there. We also have uh, Jeffrey, Jeffrey Abramowitz here from our command center in uh, Washington, D.C., our uh, co-AEFL command center, and we'll be tuning in live to Jeffrey a little bit later. Um, so welcome. Let me um, get my slides up there now that I see all your faces. It's great. Um, All right, well, let's let's kick it off here. Uh, my name is Michael Matos. I'm your COAVE uh, Region 3 representative. I'm also the EdTech Director for an organization called Scale It. And welcome to our event. A uh, little bit of our agenda. Um, as we look through the day, um, my, my intros, uh, I have a little Zoom poll. Uh, Illinois will come on, Indiana, Wisconsin. We have an attendee thermometer. Um, activity through Menti meter. Um, we have uh, Michigan, Kentucky, and then our three clicks video, um, which is a little more in a video. I plan to take you through it live and then uh, a little wrap up. So um, I'm gonna start it off here uh, before I introduce everyone and um, and let uh, you know who's presenting and so on as we go through this. Um, I'm going to see if I can set off my um, Zoom poll here. And let me stop sharing one second. We'll get this out here for everybody. Uh, Lindsay, if you can, can you launch the poll on your end? Um, yeah, it's not showing up. Let me figure this out. I'll go back to the presentation and then we could, we could look at the poll in a minute. Um, once we get it up there. Um, let's continue here, um, and we'll come back to the poll. So a little bit, a little bit of data. This is regional data. Uh, this data comes from uh, COAVE's Educate Elevate uh, fact sheets. Um, um, a little bit more than uh, the funding part here, I, I wanted to mention um, here in Region 3 of our eight states that compose Region 3, we have 3,700, a little bit over 3,700 uh, COAVE members in the region. Um, so that's that's great. That's a, a, a pretty big number and up there, uh, comparable to all the other regions. Um, in the uh, uh, funding aspect, uh, we're looking at uh, a pretty wide um, range here of anything from uh, two hundred twenty-two dollars to seven hundred sixty-five dollars of federal funds per adult learners. Something definitely worth looking at uh, later and seeing. Um, what states are doing what and how it's different things are working for different states. The annual federal funding um, over 83 uh, and a half million dollars for this region. Um, also one of the, the, the top numbers uh, region compare, comparing it uh, to other regions. Um, 
to over 205,000 uh, adult education uh, enrollees, uh, which is a, a very, very significant number. Um, we're looking at some other stats, um, some high school credentials uh, reported to, to NRS and, and through those that process and those checkpoints for NRS, we have uh, about uh, 22,400 um, uh, um, NRS uh, high school credentials awarded. Um, those testers not exactly falling into uh, the NRS um, protocol. Um, we have um, almost 30 or uh, almost 28,000 um, high school um, credentials for all testers. And uh, of course, region three and those eight states up on top. And then individuals improving one or more uh, skills, the measurable skills gain. Um, we have almost 110,000 uh, individuals doing that. Um, a little bit more uh, about our learners in this case, um, 1,850,000, that's a number of adults in region three that do not speak English well or at all. Um, 300, um, 3,500,000 is the number of working age adults. Uh, 1864 uh, without a high school credential. And then the 260,000 are those without high school credentials that are also unemployed. And this is from the adult ages of 18, 18 through 64. Um, all of this information uh, came from the Educate and Elevate, um, as you can see on the screen here with the, um, the locator tool. Um, you can find the COIB data fact sheets, um, your date, uh, state data analysis, your PIOC sheet with uh, the, the county, the state, and the national map, the QR code, and the link. Um, I'm going to go um, onto the page uh, briefly here. Um, and so, for example, if um, we were to go here and choose a state, um, and you pull it up here, then you would get your fact sheets, your state um, uh, data analysis, and then your county, state, national map by PIOC, uh, the, the skills map, um, and that works for every state. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing real quick. Um, any questions on that? Um, you could you could also go into the chat and introduce yourself with your name and uh, where you where you're calling from or where you're joining us from. And um, and once again, I'm open for questions. You you could unmute yourself, but please, uh, after the question, mute yourself uh, again. Um, any questions on that? And hopefully you're using this data. There may be some things you might need to adjust from the data, but it's a great place to start. Um, and um, as, a, as a region, looking through this data and examining this data, looking at other regions, uh, it's, it's just some good news all around. And as we continue to build this and hopefully continue to work um, together um, as we go on. Michael, are you ready for the poll? I'm ready for the poll. OK, here we go. Cool. All right, so, um, so we want to know who's out there. OK, so uh, there's about um, 78 of you on right now. So um, if you can see this poll out here, um, who is out there? We got adult ed teachers, adult ed support staff, adult ed administrators, uh, workforce trainers, legislator, or other. So hopefully, can everyone see the poll? OK. So Lindsay, you're gonna have to like um, do the controls because they won't let me. Okay, you want it shared? Yeah. Okay, here we go. All right, so it's some pretty interesting numbers here. So we've got 17% uh, of uh, instructors out there. 
AE instructors. We got the same amount and support staff. Um, we have 36% uh, of administrators and 5% workforce trainers. Um, and I would imagine the others are pretty much learners, um, which are out there, which is great. Um, hopefully we'll get some uh, legislators on here as the, as the hour progresses, okay? Any questions on that? Great, I'm gonna go back to my presentation here. Um, one second here, let me stop sharing. All right, so we talked about the data fact sheet and I'm going to uh, end my little bit of the talk here with uh, special thanks to all involved. And if I miss anybody uh, in the planning and the presentations going on today, obviously uh, special thanks to COABE and their remarkable staff. And thank you so much, uh, Sharon Body, uh, Jeffrey Abramowitz for, for your help today as well. Uh, Patrick Brown, uh, Tammy Brown, Marsha Connett, uh, Kay Crandall, Jill Dupy, um, Christy McIntyre Gray, Val Harris, Jamie Cobbs, Ugi Lamar, Carrie uh, McCurry, uh, Christopher McEl uh, McElroy, uh, Donnie Osborne, uh, Renuka Sharma, Jenny Siegfried, Aaron Wobernick, and uh, Jennifer Wigginton. Thank you all so much, and I uh, hope that you're all out there and um, hopefully can, can hear my thanks uh, over and over again. So our agenda today, uh, besides a couple of other little activities, um, Illinois coming on board, Indiana, uh, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Kentucky. And without any other, um, I, I'm going to call on you every so often to uh, let us hear you. Um, let you know. Let us hear you. Let's see your faces uh, with Adult Ed Works. 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 So um, you want to just give it a, a quick little try here, just to launch off uh, Illinois and um, give uh, Jenny Siegfried that um, the, the backup to, to come on in swinging. <laughs> okay. So uh, let me hear you. Uh, unmute yourselves if you can. So let's start by doing that. If we could all unmute ourselves, and I'll start it off with the with maybe you'll 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 join me by the, the by the third one. So, adult ed works. Adult, adult, adult ed, ed works. works. Adult ed works. Adult ed works. Yeah, we're here. We're here. We're screaming. Where is adult ed works? Adult ed works. Adult ed works. Adult ed works. Adult ed Right. Beautiful. Beautiful. We'll we'll make it a little bit more melodic in the next time around later on in the day. Okay. Um, thank you so much. Um, Illinois, are you there? Hi, Michael. Thanks so much for inviting us today. Um, my name is Jenny Siegfried, and I am the current president of IASA, which is the Illinois, oh, Illinois Adult and Continuing Education Co Association. That those are the words. We are the Illinois affiliate of COABE, and we've actually incorporated the Adult Ed Works hashtag right into our AEFL Week logo, which you can see on the page. Next slide, Michael. Thank you. Um, as Michael mentioned earlier, you can go to the Educate and Elevate website where you can find our Illinois fact sheet if you'd like to learn a bit more about our state. A couple things I'd like to point out while I have you all here is we're one of the larger states as far as adult ed enrollment goes in the Midwest. In fiscal year 20, we had over 55,000 students. Additionally, one interesting thing about our state is that our state matches our federal funding. 
which is lovely. Next slide. Other tidbits about my lovely state of Illinois. The majority of our adult ed learn students are English learners, although this can vary greatly depending on your geographic location in the state. Um, there are certainly programs out there that serve very few English learners, while other programs serve almost exclusively English learners. If you'd like to learn more about our state, please again visit this fact sheet on the Educate and Elevate website. Next slide. Um, in Illinois, we've been really lucky that we have been able to get a whole bunch of folks recognized as legislative champions, um, including our, both of our state senators, our governor, the mayor of Chicago, and a number of state and local legislators as well. Next slide. Um, two of our state legislators we recognized because they co-sponsored a, bi a bill recently that make, created a new law saying that as of January 1st, 2023, folks who complete a high school equivalency test will no longer earn a high school equivalency certificate, but instead they will earn a state of Illinois high school diploma. And the hope with this bill is that it will help erase some of the stigma that sometimes is surrounding those equivalency certificates because those students will be able to say, we have a diploma, which is very exciting. On our next slide, um, we actually have a video from the mayor of Chicago, Lori Lightfoot, another one of our legislative champion winners. And Michael will play this so we can hear what she has to say about adult education. Michael, you need to share your sound. To receive this honor, which not Hello everyone, I'm Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot. First and foremost, I want to thank the Coalition of Adult Basic Education for honoring me with this Legislative Champion Award. I'm incredibly humbled to receive this honor which acknowledges the work my administration is doing to close the digital divide and support the needs of adult learners. And one of the most impactful results of our digital divide work is Chicago Connected. Chicago Connected is a first of its kind broadband program that has connected over 64,000 Chicago public school students to free at home, high speed internet and broadband. It has made the free digital learning resources available to the entire family. The program has also gone on to become a national model for closing the digital divide for public school students and their families. Our digital equity work doesn't stop at Chicago Connected. And in fact, the program inspired us to create the Digital Equity Council. This council builds on Chicago's historic progress in the K through 12 space and pinpoints and tackles the barriers to digital equity our residents are facing citywide. So I'm excited to work with this council to continue connecting residents to the many opportunities the internet has to provide. So I am humble and thank you for honoring me with the Legislative Champion Award and for all you do to ensure people of all ages have what they need to be able to succeed and thrive. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. All right, now that we've seen some of the great things happening on the legislative side of our state, I'd like to tell you a little bit more about what my organization, IESA, is doing both to support our field and for celebrating AEFL week. So in fiscal year 22, we held a virtual rally, a virtual state conference, which included both an advocacy session and a student panel session. We held a legislative roundtable virtually in March of 2022. We also have an annual award ceremony recognizing um, teachers, support staff, administrators, and students in our field. And as an organization, we currently have over 500 members. 
Coming up soon in fiscal year 23, we will have a virtual voices advocacy event on October 12th. And we're also planning our statewide conference in March of 2023. Next slide. For Adult Ed and Family Literacy Week, we have some exciting things going on. First, we have um, proclamations from both our governor and several mayors around the state recognizing AEFL Week. Uh, some of our other board members also created a virtual party room that includes an advocacy toolkit that they sent out to programs to help programs in our state celebrate this week. We have a Twitter storm with day by day themes and you can see the graphics for each of those themes on the slide here. And if you'd like to use those graphics or see more that we're doing, you can visit our website. It's www.iasa.net. And I'm going to put the links for both the party room and our website into the chat in just one second. All right. So you are welcome to go and check those out on your own. The graphics are downloadable. So if you'd like to share them on your social media, we would love that. Next slide, Michael. All right, finally, we'd like to send you off for, and close out part of our Illinois section with the student voice for adult education, because after all, we are of course here for our students and we have this great video from a program in our state with a student discussing the importance of adult education and advocacy. IESA is the voice of adult education in Illinois and here's a student who represents that voice best. Important. Adult education. What is adult education and why is it important? Adult education helps people see their potential and guide them in the right direction and help them further their education. How is adult education funded? I know it's funded by the state and federal government and I really appreciate that because without the funding people would be slipping through the cracks and not reaching their full potential. What is advocacy and why is that important? Advocacy is when you speak up in something or anything in general. If you don't say anything, you're just going to be hurt. And my mom always told me that a closed mouth don't get fed. All right, always great to hear from students. And with that, I'm going to kick things back to Michael for a little bit more about some exciting things happening in Illinois. Thanks everyone. Thank you, Jenny, that was excellent, thank you. Um, in Illinois, um, uh, organization Scale It that I work for, um, we put together um, some big events for AEFL Week. I just wanted to share our Adult Education Matters to Me Because sign, which we have a QR code and a link here it says uh, AEFL sign. It's a bitly address with AEFL sign. You can pull that up and um, you can um, take a picture with, with your sign. Um, you can record it um, however you want to submit that. Um, and you can um, send the link to us or maybe even put it in the chat as we go along through, the, through our uh, next hour or so. Um, and I just wanted to share a, a good example video of of the passing of the sign from um, our scale it um, colleagues. Um, and here we go.
Thank you. So you too can create one of those. Uh, send us the link if you do, or if it's just a, a single shot, um, or share it as, as we go through our day today. Um, you could share it with COABE at uh, COABE.org as well. Uh, let me turn this off a second here, and we go to my next slide here. We also um, visited the, the Learning Center in Chicago um, and uh, talked to um, some of their learners and instructors there as well, and, and did the, the sign passing um, in this, this great uh, community-based organization in uh, North Lawndale and, and the little village, for the little village uh, communities of Chicago. And um, I wanna share this video with you. So thank you so much. Um, and thank you for all of those that uh, in the chat and the comments. Um, and I guess it, it is time now for our next date. And in, in, uh, are you in the house? You can please mute yourself uh, if you're not um, asking a question right now, that'd be great. And then just calling out for Indiana. So Thank you, Michael. Hi, guys. Yeah. I think Indiana is going to start with Marilyn Pitsulo. If you're there, will you join us? I am. I am here. Outstanding. Can I remind everybody, thank you for muting. That's great. Thank you. So um, good morning, and thank you. I'm Marilyn Pitsulo. I'm the state director um, in Indiana, and I'm just so pleased to be a part of um, Adult Education and Family Literacy Week. I tell everybody one of the great strengths in Indiana is our partnerships and our ability to partnership, uh, to partner. Um, and that is especially seen uh, between the state office um, of adult education that is run by the Department of Workforce Development and our partners with IAACE, our co-aid membership organization. Uh, next slide, please. So, um, Again, great to be a part of investing in the Midwest and Indiana. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about our leadership, some state staffs, uh, the adult education and family literacy uh, campaign, um, go on to our legislative awards, and then I'm gonna pass that off to uh, Christy with our program and end with Jen. Next slide, please. So our leadership in Indiana, and I take this very seriously. I may be the employee, but all of these people pour into what it is that we do in Indiana for adult education. And that includes our executive director of IAACE, Jen Wigington. Um, you all will get to see uh, Christy McIntyre Gray, our advocacy um, and Indiana fellow. Um, and then also Mike Tomlinson, our IAACE president and uh, Joe Loftus who, um, works for IAACE as, a, as a, the state lobbyist. Next slide, please. So this is program year 2021. As you know, we do not have final numbers yet for the, the pr next program year, um, but we ended um, Indiana over 70% measurable skill gains, um, close to 5,000 high school equivalency credentials, and then uh, number fourth in the nation for um, IET and what we call WEI or Workforce um, Education Initiative uh, students. None of this happens without the teachers and the programs um, that we're talking about today. Next slide. So where we are today, um, where we think we're gonna end up uh, when our numbers are final. We really focused on increasing um, rebuilding enrollment. I think we all saw uh, issues through COVID and, and drops in enrollment. We're happy to say that we're up 11% this year. Um, MSGs are down just a bit, but we'll take that with the increased enrollment to 68%. Um, high school equivalency is close to 4,000 this year and close to 1,900 students in, enrolled in our IET and workforce programming. Next slide. 
So one of the great things in the way we were able to partner this week, uh, this for this week um, with IAACE, DWD actually um, developed some social media um, content um, that we shared with our all of our providers across the state um, and that IAACE also linked to. So we're just going to quickly go through some of these. Um, and again, I think the links, uh, Jen, I'll leave it to you to talk about where the links to these can be found later. So um, we start off the week with just what is Adult Education and Family Literacy Week? Next slide. We move into some did you know um, using a co -aid and um, data. Next slide. We talk about the impact um, on diversity and equity, right? Um, and I tell our commissioner all the time that adult education in Indiana is the program of equity for the state of Indiana. Next slide. So uh, again, the need, the impact, who are we trying to reach? Uh, depending on the data, between 430 and 450,000 individuals in the state of Indiana um, do not have a secondary credential. Of that, we know that only about 40% of those are in the workforce. So golly gee, folks, if we can just increase that workforce participation rate, we can do a lot to help employers in Indiana. Next slide. What do we also know? We know that when you get that secondary credential, it has a long-term impact on your earnings abilities. Next slide. And then what do we also know? Um, I talk to people about the pebble in the pond, right? We drop the pebble in the pond, it makes one change, but then it also changes um, outside of that, right? The ripple effect. Parents with a high school diploma are just more engaged in their children's education. Next slide. And then finally, did you know that a mother's education level is the greatest determinant of her child's future academic success? If you don't want to do it for mom and dad, let's do it for the kids. Next slide. Again, partnerships, partnerships. It, that's what um, Indiana Adult Education is all about. Um, I just left a local workforce board meeting in Southern Indiana and I'm heading to a meeting um, with our community college partners in Indianapolis. It does, this does not work. This system does not work without the integrated partnership of all of these providers across the state. Next slide. So our legislative awards. Um, I want to say congratulations to Congressman um, Todd Young. Um, he is a great advocate for us um, all the way up through the Department of Education's offices. Um, Mayor Hogsett in Indianapolis, also another legislative champion, along with Senator Crane. And then finally, I get to pass this off to our very lovely adult education director and state of Indiana representative, Michelle Davis. And we thank you so much for all of your work. Michelle? I know she's out there. Hi, good, uh, good morning. Gosh, I, okay, I, I was not prepared for this, but I, <laughs> that was really slick, you guys. I am so appreciative and excited to be a part of this. Um, and I'm always advocating as I'm at the state house in my state representative role, continuing to advocate and educate on what adult education is and all the awesome, great things that we do and how impactful we are on everyone's lives that we touch. So I just got off the phone with the day, our, a local newspaper explaining this week and what it means to adult education. So I am truly blessed to be able to um, carry the torch for adult education at the State House. So thank you so much. How exciting. Thank you, Michelle. Michael, you can go to the next slide. So then again, just some more. Um, photos of our legislative champions. Um, and we look to see uh, a whole new crew of these folks being recognized next year. Next slide. All right. 
I am going to get out of your face and I'm going to pass this off to an incredible adult education director who is uh, leading the charge in our ad advocacy group for IAACE, Christy McIntyre Gray. Thank you, Marilyn. Um, first of all, I just wanted to say thank you for uh, to COAB for all the support that they've given and also our own state association with IAACE and DWD. Um, I'm Christy McIntyre Gray and I represent um, the MSD of Wayne Township's Adult Education Program. We're a program that serves a about 1,750 students annually. Um, and we serve three counties, Hendricks, Morgan, and Marion counties. Um, we represent urban, rural, and, uh, and suburban uh, communities with approximately 750 to 800 English language learners, another 750 high school equivalency students, and then um, also around 200 to 250 integrated education and training students that are advancing into careers. So we're really proud of that. Next slide, please. Um, we also did, I love the video that Illinois put together. So I think we might, we might slide our, all of ours together, um, but we went around and um, did, I choose adult ed, I choose Wayne. Um, and you know, you hear everybody's stories, the gentleman on the, far right is interested to go in, into truck driving. The lady in the middle is talking about finding a new career as a medical, um, as a nurse. So she's wanting to finish her education so she can advance to that next level. And the lady to the far left is our student who really stepped in to help her own children. Um, but as she is here to help her own children, she's also discovering some of her dreams and career goals as well. So um, I love the campaign of talking about Adult Family Literacy Week, why it's impacting us as individuals, as students, and then um, taking a look at sharing that with our community. So next slide, please. We also have here today a very special former student and um, staff member for Wayne Township is Mariella Meza. I'll just start off by saying Mariella is a student within our English language learner program and completed um, all of her training with us. And today we have over 2000 students on a waiting list because of much of her um, incredible passion for adult ed as a former student. And I'd love for Mariella to share how this program has impacted your life personally. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Mariella Meza. I'm from Nicaragua, Central America. I came three years ago with my family, my husband, Norland, my two children, Maria and Norland. And I came to the school to improve my English and I did my HSC, and now I'm very proud to be part of the program as a receptionist. Adult education has a big impact in my life. Now that I know the program, I can help all the students um, to get into the ELL program, the HSC, and they can get a career training so they can um, have new opportunity in their life as an they can get on um, improve the standard of living. Uh, when I came to the school, I was preparing myself just to improve my English and help my children. But um, actually I was preparing myself to help all these students from many cultures, from many language. So I feel very blessed to be part of the team and encourage them to um, get into the program and uh, achieve their goal. I'm very grateful, Christy, with this opportunity and with this um, program, Adult Ed, um, because I'm part of the program and I feel proud to be serving in my reception with all these students. Uh, my location or all location, Christy, is, um, is the location where life takes flies. And, um, the sky is the limit and I feel very proud of be part of the program and now I am a testimony that adult it works. Thank you. Thank you, Mariella. Um, it's 
always amazing to see you. Um, Mariella worked in the airline industry before, and in her first couple months, we ran a fun recognition program um, serving like we were air, in the airline industry and just getting students to talk about their successes. And I think the more we have our students share their story, the more um, students are magneted, magnetized into our program. And I'm thankful every day that she's that warm smile at the front desk to bring everybody into our program. Next slide, please. Um, next slide, please. Uh, we are running an Adult Family Literacy Week activity over at Area 31 um, this week for Wayne Township. Um, we have invited Mayor Hogsett and um, Senator Ford and Rep. Representative Pack will be joining us. Um, if you go to the next slide, one of the things that we're doing um, at our program is we're going to celebrate all of our nine career pathways. We have five in the medical world um, and then three that are in the trades. So uh, you can find more information about our career training programs on adulted.info. Um, and I'm also really proud that our IET classes were recognized by USDOE as an innovation project too. So if we go on to the next slide, I want to share with you a little bit. We actually have a student ambassador in every classroom. And when students lead, programs succeed. So we talk a lot about that here at Wayne um, because it's a culture. It's a culture of everybody winning, everybody working together, and students setting that temperament with our, with our teachers too. So our ambassadors work as classroom spokespersons. They assist teachers with lessons. They work engaging students with extra support. They host tours like the ones that's coming up on Thursday. And it also builds their resume just by purely helping others. Um, we also have our student ambassadors impact. They're setting a goal of 100% certification in every classroom. They're working to demonstrate to policymakers the impact adult ed has by showing that leadership and then engaging more employers on those tours that come through. So, and they're helping with our literacy week and then also attending adult ed at the state house. And I'm sorry, we've got some formatting issues. That's my fault. Um, but we have to toggle between slides and uh, PowerPoint. So if you go on to the next one, we'll just go through. These are our classroom ambassadors. Super proud of our nine students that will be leading our event. A couple things that are just fun to know, like Larry Wilson um, in the middle is a student with us in adult ed studying HVAC while his kid is also studying HVAC with our Area 31 Career Center. So it's fun to see how families all come together and how um, adult education really sets that stage of advancing education for everyone, not only the student who's showing ambition, but also their families as they inspire their children. So if we go on to the next slide, I wanted to also share with you that we have multiple corporate partners that we're working through in those classes from IU Health, the CVS, Rolls Royce, the Carpenter Union, um, Duncan Supply, Ivy Tech, Urgent Dental Care, uh, PHCC, which is plumbing, heating, cooling contractors, Vincent's, and then also BMW heating and cooling. So we're really lucky to have corporate corporate partners coming in to work with us. We also work on making sure that we do professional headshots for every student to serve as that pipeline solution and downloadable resumes so that um, all employers can um, attract in and connect and work on hiring our students. At last time uh, we had an uh, overview that 74% of our students were hireable. Now turning it over to Jen, our state association executive director. Hey everybody, we are having a student leadership track at our conference, which is next week. Too much to be said about that, so we'll just go on to the next slide. These are the individuals that are responsible for making it a success, and you can view a video on it by that YouTube link, and I'm sure this presentation is going to be available to everyone afterwards. Next slide. The, the student ambassadors that are coming uh, from Christie's program are listed here. Next slide. We were so excited to start the week with Governor uh, Eric Holcomb's proclamation of the uh, AEFL week. 
there's not a better feeling than whenever someone is listening to you and he proved that he was listening by providing that information or providing that proclamation to you. And you can see that on our um, social media sites as well. Next up. This is Christie's group, Wayne, um, celebrating with the proclamation. It's now making its way to the next organization on the list, and it's going to end up at our conference next week so that everyone has an opportunity to take a picture with it if they'd like. Next slide. Next slide. We have announced uh, a lot of things that, or this week with Adult Education Week, we are holding our second annual Adult Education Day, February 15th of 2023. We do two things at that day. We do recognize all our business partners throughout the entire state, and we hold an essay contest for students on the theme being how adult education has got them to the next level. Next slide. I just met with Senator Braun's staff this morning. That was one of the reasons why I got on just a couple minutes late and went over what our ask are with him. And he believes that Senator Braun will be on board with it because of all of the success that we have demonstrated and all the stories that we were able to share within as well. But those are our asks for the legislation, and I'm sure that you're all familiar with it because I'm sure that the, your asks are very similar. Next up. I think that concludes everything. I want to thank Christy and Marilyn and Michelle for coming on, and I shall pass it back over to Michael. Thanks for being here, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, Indiana. Awesome information. Um, well, let's continue. Um, I think we have Wisconsin on board here. Uh, Wisconsin, are you in the house? We are. Thank awesome. you, Michael. Thank you. And thank you, Coabe, for having us here today. Um, we're from Wisconsin Literacy. Before we get started, I just want to give a shout out to our data and communications manager, Dan Torres, for his help building our beautiful slides and also his video editing wizardry. So thanks, Dan. Um, my name is Jamie Copes. Like I said, I'm with Wisconsin Literacy. I am a tutor training and digital literacy project manager, and I have a co-presenter here today. Marsha, are you here? I am. Good morning. I'm Marsha Conant. I'm the Southeast Regional Consultant here for Wisconsin Literacy, and we're going to tell you a little bit about what makes this agency so unique. Yep, next slide. Thank you. Um, so we do have a significant need in Wisconsin. About 15% of Wisconsin adults can only read simple sentences and phrases on familiar topics. And about 25% of Wisconsin adults can only solve basic adding, subtracting, dividing, and multiplying. So whether literacy, numeracy, or obtaining a high school equivalency, that's 1.5 million people in Wisconsin who need help building literacy skills. Next slide, please. So how do we meet those needs? Well, we meet those needs with folks like me. There are four regional consultants who each serve the four corners of the, of the state, as you can see here. Plus we have a, a, a regional coordinator who's helping new programs get started in those few counties that we're currently not serving. Our mission is changing lives by strengthening a literacy statewide but our vision is that all people in Wisconsin have those literacy skills to reach their full potential. So what we do as regional consultants is work with each of the literacy programs in our area to help with things like tutor training and mm -hmm. curriculum development and professional development and board recruitment, retention and training, and many, many other things, as well as networking opportunities. Next slide, please. So what we do is kind of like a four legged leg chair. We work with members and community, workforce, advocacy and health literacy through our division, Wisconsin Health Literacy. Next slide, please. 
So in members and community, as I said, we have about 70 local programs that serve both adult and family literacy programs. We're in 86% of the counties of our state and moving on toward that 100%. Pre-pandemic, we were at about 16,000 adults and children receiving services from those members. And as we're crunching those numbers currently, it looks like we're starting to get back to that. Wisconsin Literacy works uh, with our members, yep, sorry, works with our members to, uh, to help folks that are immigrants or refugees learn English. They help adults prepare for GED, HSED, and citizenship tests. They teach basic reading and writing skills so learners can get better jobs, get into career training programs. They teach computer skills, and they work on job readiness and workplace skills. And one of the key components of our members are their volunteers. Literacy without volunteers is, is just empty. Next slide, please. In the workforce, our members work with educational programs around the state. It might be technical college systems, might even be private colleges or public colleges where students might need a little bit of extra help. They also work with school districts around the state. They work with workforce development boards in their areas. And they also work with Wisconsin Works or W2. And many of you might recognize that as maybe your welfare agencies statewide. And we know that so many people who use those services need the services of literacy programs as well to improve their lives. Next, next slide. And advocacy is another one of those legs. Pictured here is, is uh, Michelle Erickson, our executive director. And she often quotes Peter Waite here and says, without literacy, a lot of those social and work-related initiatives are doomed to fail. Next slide. So we provide leadership and that statewide voice that is so important. We advocate for those learners all around the state. We connect to government agencies like Department of Workforce Development, Department of Public Instruction, Department of Children and Families, all of whom provide grants to help us do the work that we do. We have representation on a whole variety of state councils and we truly believe that literacy is at the core of a wide range of government and social services. Next slide. Finally, Wisconsin Health Literacy is a division that's been with us for just over 10 years. They offer education and training in that whole world of health literacy. They have provided community projects and programs like, let's talk about COVID, let's talk about the flu, how to find solid medical information online, things of that nature uh, to programs all around the state. They have a health literacy summit every other year that's not only national in scope, but international in scope. And the best part is 21% of Wisconsin pharmacies have made prescription labels easier to read and understand because of our med label project. Next slide, please. Now I'd like to introduce to you John Gilgenbach. John is executive director of the Adult Learning Center in my region in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and also Dr. Stacy Martin. She's a virtual math instructor who works for Wisconsin Literacy and provides math help and training to students all around the state because it is virtual. So if you'd share John's story on the next slide, please. Over the last year and now going into the school year again, uh, the Adult Learning Center has, has become a, a dual delivery program. Um, so it's not hybrid per se, but we have both in-person classes and uh, virtual classes, live virtual classes. Uh, they actually run at the same time and we, we have the same teachers. So our teachers split their week between working from home and working with online students. And then the other half of the week, they come in person and work with the in-person students. 
So we always try to explain to students, you know, if you're, whether you're in person or online, you're going to get the same attention from the teacher. You know, it's not that we've got a teacher in a classroom with a computer in the back of the room and you got to remember to talk to the computer kids every now and then. It's like, oh, no, you know, if, if you're online at home, your teacher is also online at home and focused on you and your online classmates. And then at first, obviously, when COVID shut us down, we wanted to stay, stay on, stay active. Um, so we had an all online program going there through 2020, but we've been able to open up our doors and let people back in. So we're, we're seeing just as much interest at this point in the online as in person. So we, the foreseeable future, we'll offer both. So her name, the student I have in mind, her name is uh, Patricia, and she has been with us for maybe going on two years now. This is probably her third or fourth semester. Um, she is a, she's been a great student. She's really kind of worked her way up from, from a, a mid-level to nearly completing her math test at this point and her other tests along the way, civics and language arts are already done. Um, so what makes Patricia kind of stand out is that uh, she, she lives nearby to our center. And since she was focused on math, she was doing both, as, as I talked about. She was joining our online class two days of the week and then coming in person to be with the math teacher in person the other two days of the week. So she was trying to maximize her, her time, yeah. by having, you know, studying math four days a week. Um, However, unfortunately, back in April, when she was walking to class, she was hit by a car crossing the street. Uh, somebody was speeding through an intersection and, and hit her. And, you know, it was a whole thing. People, there were witnesses. She thankfully is okay, but she was stuck at home then. She could not come to the in-person classes. And she really was trying to focus and get that math done. So that was right around the time we started working with Stacy. She was working with a couple other students. I got in touch with her. I said, hey, I've got, a, I've got this situation. You know, this student is available two days out of the week because she was coming in person, but she can't get out of the house for the next eight weeks. Um, and right away, Stacey was able to connect with her. And that allowed this student, Patricia, to continue working on math four days a week. So she was still joining our math teacher online for the live classes and then working with Stacy uh, either after class or the other day. But she, she made it work for two more days of the week to work with Stacy and really just, again, focus on that math and make great great games and we're hoping to have her test at the end of this month actually very nice is, is she well now is, is she, she is yeah so okay. she just uh last week uh, she walked through the door i spoke with her but just, <laughs> I, I had stopped by her house and dropped off materials back in july or june and uh yeah so she's back and then this week she'll be back here in person she'll be back in, on tomorrow for the in-person math class so then then she's when she came in yesterday to check her schedule she said uh can you let stacy know that I can do Wednesday afternoon. Wednesday, yeah, so she still wants. She wants to do it all. All right, um, Patricia's story is a story about her amazing determination, and it's about the persistence that we see in adult learners despite barriers. But it's also a story of what success can look like when we work to overcome the digital divide in Wisconsin. And we know that when we talk about the digital divide, it's in two areas. It's about access and it's about skills. According to 2018 data from the U.S. Census Bureau, nearly 370,000 Wisconsinites do not have Internet in their homes. And low digital literacy skills can keep adults from accessing health care, employment, education, and if you're a football fan, even Thursday night football games on Amazon Prime, right? Um, with COVID, more people were forced to study and work from home, and the digital divide is now widening, widening existing racial and socioeconomic achievement gaps. Wisconsin Literacy has become a recipient of a Department of Administration grant, and we are hoping that this will assist us in solving these problems statewide. Um, the grant is going to allow us to purchase hardware and materials for our members who fall into 21 uh, census tract counties. Uh, it's also going to help us uh, with capacity building efforts in tutor training and digital literacy skills. Next slide, please. So we just want to close today with a final message from John Gildenbach, and he's going to help remind us why we're all here today, and that's our adult learners. I really want to if anything, just kind of salute our students. You know, I'm always impressed. And even this week coming back, it's all crazy and stressed out. But we always have such motivated people. As long as we can kind of keep that, keep, capture that, and keep their, them focused on these, on their motivation, their personal motivation, rather than us telling them, "Well, you got to do this because we said so." Right? That's not going to work. Um, and that said, we get so many great.
motivated students who really, really want to do this. So the beginning of the school year is always very exciting and just kind of capturing that. So that's where we are now. So I really just want to, if anything, just salute our adult learners for, for wanting this so bad. You know, they, they come to us and they're like, well, what do I need to do? When do I need to be here? You know, do I need to buy this book? Do I need to do what, what's going to make me successful? All right, so that's what we need to hear. There should be just one more slide, our contact page. Thank you, everyone. Yes, thank you. Please feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions or like to hear more about what we're doing. But thanks for having us today. Thank you, Wisconsin. Um, there's a lot of information also being added to the chat. So please uh, stay in contact with the chat there as well. Um, a lot of other links and um, information being added in the chat as well. Um, I just, uh, we are uh, kind of going in live to um, our command center in Washington, D.C. for COEB uh, EF, AEFL week. Um, if you say it uh, enough times, uh, the, the letters start to, to move. <laughs> um, so um, I just wanted to see, um, uh, Jeffrey, are, are, you, are you out there? In the command center. Well, we'll come back and see um, if uh, Jeffrey could just say hello from the command center. Uh, but they are tuning in every so often. Uh, we have a little activity for you. Um, uh, this particular activity, it's uh, asking what's a one word strength that comes to mind when you think of adult education and our. Um, our state um, association uh, leader from um, Michigan, Patrick Brown, is um, going to uh, facilitate this particular activity. Uh, Patrick, are you there? I am. So I've dropped the link into the chat if everyone wants to go to the chat and click that. Or you can pull out your smartphone, open your camera, and point it at the screen. Those are both two ways. So we'll give you a few seconds here. Hope you're engaged with us and excited. Um, and we wanted to ask you this question. What's a one word strength that comes to mind when you think of adult education? So you can click the link in the chat and we'll go there and ask you. It'll lead you to a website or you can hold your camera um, on your smartphone up to your computer and take a picture. And it will also lead you to um, the link there. We'll give you a few more seconds and then we'll flip over to um, the word wall. I'm seeing some great words coming in. So I am going to, if I can, Michael, share my screen, if that's okay. Yes. And I will show some of the wonderful words that we have coming up. So here are some of the words that you all have started to share. Empowering uh, possibilities. I love that. Life-changing, volunteers, tenacity, resiliency, persistence, courage. Um, motivation, amazing, independence, the best kept secret. <laughs> That's a great one. But these are all wonderful words um, that really do capture the spirit of adult education in all of our states, especially in the Midwest. And uh, thank you for taking some time to just share with us these important words and um, would encourage you to use some of these words as you continue to advocate and think about adult education. Uh, or as if you're a partner, Think about ways that adult education can continue to be an asset for your local community. So thank you, Michael. Thank you, Patrick. You can continue to populate this. Uh, we should we should uh, maybe go back to it a little bit later, and we could we could see it at the end. Uh, but we continue to to send in those uh, those words. Um, there's quite a few of you on. Uh, three words should see a lot more. So let's let's see a lot more of those on there. Uh, and let's continue. Let's continue with the show here. Um, let me go back to the presentation here. And um, I guess, Patrick, you can stay right on. And Michigan is next. Take it away, Michigan. Thank you so much. We're happy to be here. We're so excited for the rally. Thank you all so much for being here. I'm Hedge Brown, uh, Executive Director of McKay, which is our state association here in Michigan. And I have a wonderful co-host with me, Carrie. Would you like to introduce yourself, Carrie? 
Hi, everyone. I am Carrie Machikuli. I am the IET coordinator with the Literacy Center of West Michigan, as well as Michigan's 2022 uh, SAFE Fellow with COVID. And we are so happy to be here to be representing, we have to say, the best state in the Midwest. We have to say that. All right, go ahead. Thank you, Michael. So a little bit about our wonderful state here in the Great Lakes State um, is we have a very strong uh, presence here for adult education and integrated education and training. Our state association is very strong and it's a great networking and collaborative space and all throughout the pandemic and, um, and continuing on uh, past it this summer, we've continued to operate and have our programs really make wonderful strides and impactful work uh, completed in their local communities. Uh, and so we just wanted to share some wonderful pictures of some of the success opportunities that have been out there. Um, and if you're from Michigan, I'd love for you to say hello in the chat. I see so many of our friends and colleagues here, Carrie, and I would love to see that. Um, and we're going to share a little bit more about what's been happening in adult education in Michigan. Go ahead, Michael. So let's look first at the need in Michigan. Um, so this is the data based on the 2019-2020 program year, but it reflects the, reflects the high need that we have for um, increased services in our state. Look at the first number there, so 234,995 adults who do not speak English well or at all in the state of Michigan. Um, this is actually double the number that we saw the, the previous year to that, um, which was just above 100,000. This also reflects recent data collected uh, that from 2010 to 2020, um, Michigan saw an increase of 16% um, in, in immigrants settling in Michigan, uh, including refugees and asylees, um, the majority of them being adults. Let's look at the next number. So over uh, 500,000 working age adults without a high school credential, um, working age adults is in the, between the age of 18 to 64, um, as well as uh, the 47,000 plus uh, adults who did not have a high school diploma and were unemployed. Um, so this certainly reflects the needs that we have in Michigan um, across all places and all spaces um, from parent literacy to workplace literacy uh, to community literacy. We also wanted to frame the conversation around the connection that adult education has to many other statewide and national initiatives, especially statewide initiatives happening in our state. Um, and that is something that we as a state association and all of our providers have been really dialed into over the last few months and even the last, I would say, 18 to 24 months. The first is obviously credential attainment. How are we seeing um, those that maybe are transitioning out of our K-12 system? How are we ensuring that they're reaching their educational goals, um, getting that diploma or high school equivalency, and then transitioning? Certainly, we've talked about this today, but child literacy, uh, we know that when we're educating a parent, we're engaging with child literacy. We have um, certain uh, literacy laws here in our state that are focused on early childhood intervention, and this is a great opportunity, and many of our providers are working with the children. Um, uh, that are in the public school system or even children if they're a nonprofit agency through literacy coaching. Providing economic stability, uh, we've launched a number of initiatives to partner our adult education providers with their local workforce development partners around integrated education and training opportunities. We really feel like that's the way of the future as well as increasing the number of workplace literacy program offerings that are available so that uh, means having adult education programming directly on site with employers, making that impact before, after shifts, during shifts to increase that educational capacity right there in collaboration with the employers and our workforce development. Strengthening communities. We know that uh, educational centers are central to strong communities and vibrant and resilient communities. And so if we can uh, enhance our physical locations, as well as enhance the impact that we have within programs, we will only continue to just build a foundation and a center that becomes a trusted resource within our communities. And the last is obviously a major um, issue happening all across our nation, but particularly in Michigan and different economic sectors is a talent shortage. 
making sure that we can transition highly skilled um, workers um, with those skills into in demand and needed uh, positions. And so we've been working to do that and transition people successfully to post-secondary access, college access, and employment. Speaking of making connections, the learner in our next video, her story is um, a very key example of how we make connections across the state of Michigan. Um, Rashida uh, worked with multiple agencies within Michigan uh, to connect from her English classes, certified training, employment, and beyond. Let's listen. I've always wanted to be a nurse, uh, even when I was in Algeria. When I got married, my husband was uh, living here in the United States. When um, I joined him, I found that this as an opportunity to uh, start my dream job the from the beginning. I looked for a job that doesn't need a certification. So I found uh, one as a caregiver and uh, um, because my English wasn't uh, wasn't really good, they sent me to the Literacy Center of West Michigan. It's thanks to Literacy Center to West Michigan that I've heard about the Goodwill CNA program. The CNA program at Goodwill is a month full time. As I remember, there was uh, the two first weeks you'll do a theory, and then the last two weeks uh, it's uh, clinicals, and then after doing the clinicals in the lab here at Goodwill. Uh, they will send you to a facility to, uh, to practice there. Immediately after being done with the, the CNA program at Goodwill, I uh, had an interview at Portrait Hills Village and I got that position. After feeling that uh, I had uh, enough time, I felt that I needed a hospital experience. So uh, I applied to uh, select specialty hospital uh, at Spectrum Health Blooded. I just feel like uh, if I didn't do Goodwill, if I didn't do the CNA program, I wouldn't be able to get to the medical field. I wouldn't be able to work uh, in a nursing home. I wouldn't be able to make great connections. So from just uh, trying to practice my English to the CNA class, to working in a nursing home, to working in the hospital, now I'm, uh, I've been in the waiting list for two years uh, and I'm starting the nursing program I would recommend the CNA program to anyone who uh, uh, who wants to be in the medical field. I honestly don't don't feel don't think I would be that I would feel that ready to start if I didn't do uh, I didn't go through all these steps. Great. So again, Rashida's story is a prime example um, of how we can make. Uh, connections using multiple different agencies uh, in our state. Um, the impact in Michigan. The impact in Michigan is more than just the numbers. Uh, from the same 2019-2020 year, uh, we saw over 25,000 enrollments. I think we're on track for more than that this year. Um, but more than just the numbers, our programs across the state build pathways for adults to access employment opportunities, workforce preparation, and certification programs. Many programs also support families empowering parents as learners to advocate for their children and their children's learning, ending the cycle of low literacy and generational poverty across the state. Our programs connect with local foster care agencies to get youth connected to free and low cost trainings to connect them to career pathways. Um, the program that I work with uh, even has an English class for potential foster care parents to get more diverse population care parents working with a refugee and asylum youth entering the foster care system. Resource navigators for our partners and within many of our programs help give our learners the skills um, to lift themselves and their families out of poverty. Many programs across the state work with adults with learning disabilities to give them a customized learning experience that they, they need to reach their goals. And of course, for our parent literacy programming, we certainly see an impact with children being more engaged in their learning as a family with their parents. At my own program, we host family activity nights 
uh, where parents and children come together for a meal and play literacy focused activities at their children's school. All this to say the impact is more than just the numbers. It is the community and all the people coming together and advancing and owning their learning across Michigan. Next slide. Here's another video as an example of how our uh, education programming for adult learners is more than just um, an English class. Um, it is connecting individuals to support their own community members and provide access to others in the community to services that they might not have had access to before. Let's listen to Karina's story. And I don't know if the sound is working. Maybe, maybe we can describe Karina's story, Carrie. Yeah, so uh, Karina was a learner with the Kent uh, ISD. Uh, she took classes for community interpreter training. The reason she took those classes is because she wanted to connect people in her community to have access to healthcare and other government resources um, who had low levels of literacy. Um, so she took the community interpreter training to give back to her own community and advocate for her own community members. Thank you, Carrie. So we've shared a little bit about the need, the impact, the connections, and now we really want to talk about the future of adult learning in our state. We are really focused on uh, leaning, leaning forward and looking at possible opportunities for the future. The last two years, especially coming out of the pandemic, have only forced us to be more creative, more innovative, and more collaborative with our partners. So we are looking at investments as a state in the following areas, looking at professional development, increasing that education awareness and that connectivity with other um, statewide and national initiatives. Also looking at increasing the number of workplace literacy and integrated education and training opportunities, examining and expanding transitional employment points and shared partner performance and partnerships. One of those areas includes looking at uh, those learners that are transitioning to or eligible to transition to post-secondary. How can we make that transition and that link greater and more stable for them? Also looking at statewide partnerships. We have a great working relationship at the statewide level with our Michigan Works Association, which is our workforce development partners, as well as all of the other titles um, under the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act and other statewide policy partners. Looking at other strategic funding investments to increase outcomes, really looking at transitional pathways and looking at a lot of the workplace literacy innovation. And then obviously investing in capacity building and supports that would include technology investments to increase high flex learning, which is the asynchronous or synchronous learning opportunities we have available, as well as increasing staffing to increase the number of learners that are able to get their high school equivalency. We have about 3,500 students in our state who over the last several years have completed three of the four GED tests. And the last one, can you guess it? It's math. So how can we increase investments to get that population to completion and transition in their high school equivalency completion? Next slide, Michael. So this year, as far as uh, legislative support in the state of Michigan, um, our governor, Gretchen Whitmer, um, created a proclam proclamation for Adult Education and Family Literacy Week, um, as well as celebrating a legislative champion. So last year, Gretchen Whitmer was actually our legislative champion. This year, we are highlighting one of our state representatives, Ben Frederick. Um, ben Frederick has been uh, recognized for his advocacy for the Michigan Reconnect program, um, which has short-term, uh, excuse me, short-term training grants. That's a tongue twister. Um, that would also allow learners new opportunities to participate in high-quality career training programs. Um, he has dedicated um, 
$1.5 million annual COVID relief funding for the expansion of ReConnect um, in the House's budget proposal for the fiscal year that begins um, next month. Um, so we are celebrating uh, these two, uh, and they are celebrating adult education this week as well. Uh, next slide. And then statewide, we are promoting AEFL Week on social media. So if you would like to join us, if you're joining us from across the state of Michigan, we have also, like many of the other states in the Midwest, have created a worksheet to engage uh, with our learners and educators across the state of Michigan um, to celebrate why education is important to us. Um, so if you'd like, you can either use that QR code or the bit.ly link that's on there. And then I'm also dropping that into the chat. That's it from Michigan. We so appreciate you listening and taking time uh, to listen. We appreciate the partnership. And I'll leave you with this acronym from last year that we shared. Adult education in Michigan creates homes. Um, that's the acronym we use to remember the Great Lakes. There's five of them here on Ontario, Michigan, Erie, and Superior. And so adult education leaves those that are a part of it, whether as a participant or as a participants with homes. Hope opportunity, meeting measurable skills, employment and training, as well as success. So thank you so much and keep on rallying in support of adult education. Thank you so much, Patrick, Kerry. Um, thank you, Michigan. And we're on to our last state, um, uh, Kentucky. And um, I'm hope hoping that uh, Donnie's in the house and Kentucky's in the house and um, can take this over here. Um, uh, yes, I, I'm here. Awesome. Thank you so much. Are you ready? Yes. All right. Go for it. Um, hello, my name is Donnie Osborne. I'm the uh, SAFE Fellow for the Commonwealth of Kentucky and the Assistant Director of KEDC Adult Education, the third largest adult education in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Uh, I'll, providing services in 11 different counties. Yesterday, the Lieutenant Governor in the state capital rotunda kicked off Adult Ed and Family Literacy Week. She referred to it as uh, her favorite week because she's a former educator. Um, the state offices is through Kentucky Adult Education. They facilitate through 26 fiscal agents operating in all 120 counties. This year, we are rebranding adult education, and we're also returning to the original mission of uh, to provide services to all adults with a focus on workforce education, the creation of IETs and workplace literacy programs. Um, we are entering back into correction, ed correctional education, operating adult ed services in all state uh, um, correctional facilities and our college preparatory and skills upgrade programs. GED diploma is the high school equivalency for the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Um, and we are, we just had a rollout of our uh, intention to return to family literacy. And our ESL programs are operated. I think every program does have ESL services. Next slide, please. As we return from recovery for the pandemic, um, we've reimagined adult ed services. Our hybrid programs are still offered. Um, we had 16,303 adults enrolled. That uh, uh, population was primarily high school equivalency seekers. Uh, of those, 3,666 earned their GD diploma. Um, and but more significantly to me is that almost 11,000 had in measurable skills increase. That's 67% of those enrolled. Uh, next slide. And as we celebrate our, our strengths, we recognize the need that still exists. There are 75,000 adults who do not speak English well or at all. Um, 300 and 
30,000 working age adults without a high school credential. Um, that number, the state's working hard to decrease. And at the presentation yesterday, the Lieutenant Governor said there's a desire to completely eradicate that number. The, one of the ways that we are addressing that is all programs uh, have a college and career navigator, at least one full-time college and career navigator. Uh, that staff person's job is to help provide the services, address barriers, make connections, referrals to other agencies such as OVR um, or enrollment in post-secondary institutions. Uh, at KDC, our, one of our, call, our navigators is a former GD graduate who returned to school and uh, um, continuing his life work to help adults return to college. Next slide, please. This week, we have a few things planned um, with a focus on um, Family literacy, Eastern Kentucky, uh, which were, is where I'm, uh, I'm joining this call from, was devastated recently by flooding, and a few programs in the area have uh, tried to address that issue uh, with book drives. Um, in about half an hour, I'll be at one in the Ashland area, where they've already distributed uh, 200 books to local elementary schools, free public libraries, and residential treatment facilities. In uh, the Big Sandy region, they have been collecting books and they will distribute those throughout uh, Pike and Floyd counties. Next slide. We are blessed in Kentucky to have public servants who have recognized the benefit of adult education. And we have two that are selected as uh, uh, legislative champion awards. You, Chairman Yarmouth, uh, who has been very beneficial in um, securing federal support for adult education and we owe us services. And at the local level uh, or at the state level, Governor Andy Bashir, who has proclaimed this week, uh, last year and this year, as well as from the moment he started, covered the cost of GD testing in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Uh, high school equivalency testing is free. And this year we're covering the cost of two retakes. And I'm so glad my internet stayed up for this long. <laughs> thank you so much, Donnie, and thank you, Kentucky. Um, Hopefully uh, this event um, has been worthwhile and um, just a, um, a, a great way to see a collaboration, um, not only within the states from neighborhood to town to state, but within this whole region um, as we collaborated to put together this event. And um, we continue to collaborate. Um, hopefully even more in the future uh, within Region 3 uh, to continue the successes that um, each state has um, kind of chimed in with uh, everything here today. Um, great stuff. Um, I'm going to end it here with um, just a couple of minutes. Um, I want to I want to see some uh, some faces here and I'm going to stop sharing. Um, and just take you on a, uh, just another quick um, round of uh, Adult Ed Works. And, uh, and then I'm going to take you into my uh, three clicks to end uh, so you can go in and do your own uh, advocacy online uh, within a couple of minutes, really. Um, so hey, ready? Michael? Yes. Could we get a screenshot of all the smiling faces as well, you think? Of course, of course. <laughs> um, so, um, you ready? One, as will ever be. Two, three. Adult Ed work. 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 Adult Ed works. Adult Ed works. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I, thank you all so much for being here. Uh, just some some great stuff. 
that we we looked at today um and like i mentioned i i um i, I want to end it off here by uh, our three clicks uh campaign and um so if you um you can visit uh co uh the coab um the the cengage uh coab home here uh at cqrsengage.com uh forward slash coag forward slash home or the qr code here um and i'm going to take you right there so our first step here is obviously to choose your action or take action on all three the highly recommended way um, i'm going to take action on um advocate to keep 700 million dollars for adult education and uh the reconciliation bill and as you can see my information is all in here so you would add this information here um and then remember to remember me and then so you can do this even quicker um and then your email opt-in so you can receive that email that had it to know that your um your submission has been received on the other end um once you submit it you can see the um the letter here which you can edit adjust add things take away things um and then the recipients over on the left as you can see there uh, my uh, state rep and my two state senators uh at the bottom it's uh your closing and then your your name and um you would submit and it is done you get a thank you you will also get a thank you in the email as well um Thank you, Michael. I think we need to end it here so we could start our next webinar. I hope everybody can join. Okay. Thank you so much, everybody, and get on to the next webinar and uh, continue to support AEFL Week. And we'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Michael, bye bye.